Hello everybody, my name is Tamilola Mike Pamiloye and I'm here to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notifications and updates on new movies that will be dropping from time to time. So if you've subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing and if you're not, please subscribe. You were gonna spend the night and go back home early tomorrow morning. No, I never promised you that, sweetie. Oh, come on. Anita. Last week, you spent the night just once. And you told me you were gonna make it twice this week. Come on, Anita. Please spend the night tonight. No. 
first day of Friday night. Wait, not even Friday. My pastor is going to notice my absence from the Friday night video. So Saturday, Saturday night, okay? Saturday. Hello? Who is this? Who? Simeon! Simeon, uh, how are you? How far? Faith, okay? Don't be discouraged. I know you're trying, but please try more, okay? You can still reapply for the visa, or you can. So, what else do you want me to do now? I'm working on my immigration papers. I can't travel yet. I'm still working on it. Hopefully in the next five to six months. I'm sure it will be possible this year. I'm managing. Things are not easy. at the office are always making jest of me calling me a married bachelor it's not easy there i'm sorry honey we'll be together soon okay so where are you now what um um i'm i'm in front of the of the church we just um we just finished a gospel service and i'm going home actually we're having a seven day prayer and fasting in I have prayed and fasted on today's visa interview. Yet I was turned down. All the same, God understands. And how is your uncle? My uncle, he's fine. He's always asking after you too. I will pray for you too here, okay? Um, listen, sweetie, I gotta go, okay? I'll call you back later. All right, I'll be expecting. Yeah, bye. Larry. What? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I was on the phone talking to my husband and you couldn't even show a little courtesy for being with his wife. Listen, Anita. Who cares about a man who's thousands of miles away? Huh? What makes you think he's not sorting himself out the way you are sorting yourself out right here, right now? Answer me. No, I trust him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just as he trusts you too, huh? Is that all right? Listen, Anita, sit down. Sit down. Look at me. I have a wife back at home too, you know. But, wrong with being with such a sweet and caring person just like you huh so Anita be happy with what makes you happy baby all right oh come on now what
Hello? Pastor? Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. I, I couldn't come to the church this evening. I had much work to do and I had to meet some deadlines at the office. I worked up until 8 this evening. So, where, where are you now? I, I am presently in my room, sir. I have decided to take some time to rest. I'm, I'm, I'm resting at home. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, I need time. Thank you, sir. I'm very grateful. What's up? That was my pastor. I'll take you home. Did I scare you? Yes. <laughs> I'm very sorry to bust into your house unannounced. I tried several efforts to get your attention, including calling you several times without any response. I sent your friend, Eunice, to you to see me in my office, but you refused. But how, how did you not... <laughs> Eunice. She opened the door for me. This evening after the Bible studies, I told her I have to see you urgently. So, I came here with her. When I got here, I didn't see you. So I called you to tell you I'm around. But I was amazed when you told me on phone that you were in your room resting after a hectic day. And that is the confirmation of what the Lord told me about you. What did the Lord tell you about me, sir? <laughs> That you are sliding back into the world of lustful pleasure. And that you have compromised your faith in the Lord and you are living in sin and disobedience. So, I had to come here and talk to you. 
And here is the confirmation. Anita, why did you come to church this evening? I was in the church on Sunday, sir. Yes. And you sang in the choir. I saw you. But this evening, you didn't show up. I was overwhelmed at work today, and I could not make it to church. Have you heard from your husband? Yes. We spoke this evening. I told you he said he was going to the embassy this morning. He went, but he wasn't given the visa. And that is why I'm here. How? It's time to go back home. To where, Pastor? It is almost two years now since you got into this country. And you have only spent about two months with your husband before your big uncle secure you a visa to this country. And you have hoped that your husband will join you. And that hope has gone on and on and on, up till now. I can't go back home yet. My immigration papers are not yet complete. And leave the papers alone and go back home and build the home God has given to you. You have to choose between completing your immigration papers or building a godly home. Did my husband call you to talk me into leaving my work here and returning home? No. It wasn't your husband who spoke to me. The Holy Spirit sent me to you to come and warn you to desist from your godly way of life and to do His will. I am not living an ungodly life, sir. I am not. Here you are. Here you are. His sins are not clean in His sight. And you should fear an impending disaster. Disaster? What disaster? What do you think? Don't you think there is a consequence for every act of ungodliness? You left your husband back at home in the cold and you began to live a reward life here. That is not true, sir. It is not true. You attend parties and clubs and hang out with ungodly friends and yet you serve at the Lord's altar. A church worker, and you sing in the choir. This evening, when I didn't see you in the church, the Holy Spirit moved me to come and talk to you. Have you once heard of the parable of the ten virgins? Yes. Five were wise and five were foolish. And you belong to the foolish camp. Me? The light has gone out and your lamp has no oil in it. You are empty on the inside and you are surrounded by darkness outside. But how? The Lord impressed it upon my heart to come here and share a story with you so as to give you an understanding of how spiritually empty and physically gullible you are. A story? Yes. It's a story of an African prince called him urgently to come and attend to some of his father's business. Come on. Victoria. Just... look at me. It was because my father sent for me urgently. That's why I have to go. He needs me to attend to some personal business of his. I'll be back. Business? Yes. What business? Sweetheart. Your father's a royal king. I know. He has several subjects. He has aides and business associates. Why didn't he send for one of them to help manage his urgent business needs? Why you?
Sweetheart. Come on. Because I was there when we started the multinational business. We started it together. And I can fix these problems. So why are you coming back? I'll be back just as soon as the work gets done. I believe very soon I'll be back. How soon? Very soon. But please, sweetheart. Hold on for me. Okay? I'll be back soon. Again, please take care of the home till I come back. Okay? Fine. Who will be with me while you're away? Sweetheart, I'll take care of that. When I get home, I'll send my twin brother. He will live within the city. Keep you coming until I come back. Okay? very long journey and left his wife behind with an assurance that he would be back very soon. Has that story begun to make any sense to you? Not really, not yet, sir. Didn't Jesus say the same thing to all his disciples in John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 when he said let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, you may be also. The prince never said exactly when he will return. But he assured his wife he would be back very soon. Is this story now making any sense to you? Yes, Pastor. <sighs> Meanwhile, days rolled into weeks and month rolled into years. The wife of the prince still waited. I don't know when he will be coming. Your heart beats 
Busy sorting out some problems in our father's company. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So, when is he coming back? I miss him so much. It is very difficult to say when he will come back, but his coming back is very sure. He said when he comes back, he will relocate his family back home. Relocate? We're going back home with him? Um, that was what he said. We have a very big palace back home and many servants too. I will wait. I will wait for him. Oh, how I miss him so much. He wrote me a letter. He wrote me a letter. Oh. My dearest Victoria, it has been six months since I left you, but it has been like eternity. I am very sorry that I had to leave you when I did. It was my father's business that demanded my attention. But you don't worry. I will make up for my absence when I come back. I sent my brother, Shalom, to inform you that I have decided to bring you all back here with me, so I won't have to leave you again. Here is a very large palatial mansion for us. It is more comfortable here by all standards. I will come for you very soon. My brother, Shalom, will always come to visit you from time to time and I will always send messages to you. I will be back soon. I miss you. I miss your companionship. My heart is always with you. I love you dearly. Your loving husband, Prince Emmanuel Godwin. So, how do you feel now? I feel great. I feel great. I feel on top of the world. I will wait for him. I will wait. One more thing. Okay. My brother commissioned me to see to your welfare and to help you in all ways possible till he comes back. Okay. Here's my card. It contains my address and my phone numbers. I live close by. Oh, great! Which means it will be easy for me to get in touch with you anytime. Always be in touch with you from time to time. Thank you. Thank you. He sent his twin brother to stay and watch over his wife. 
Does anything about relocation sound familiar to you? Relocation? No. He sent a message to his wife that he will come and relocate her to his palatial residence. I don't know about any relocation. And you must be done with understanding, Nita. Haven't you heard of these things many times in the church before? I've never heard any message about relocation in the church, sir. But you have heard about the rapture of the saint. About Jesus coming to take his bride home to be with him forever. Yes, I, I think so. I think so. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4. That's 16 to 17. That is similar to the relocation that the prince was talking about in his financial residence. Victoria, I am coming back to you. I am coming back to you. But you have to be patient. You have to be patient. I will come back to you. I am. You just have to be patient. It's a fault. You have to be patient. Hello? Victoria. 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 Hello? Us. We kind of disappointed her. What's going on, Victoria? Girls, I have told you, leave me alone. Come on, girl. We've been together before, having lots of fun, painting the city red. Remember? Lots of drains. And, ooh, man. I'm so. Her so-called prince stole her away from us. He did not steal me away. I chose to follow him. And for your information, I love him. Prince 
Same thing with her. To relocate me to live with him in his palatial residence. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. <laughs> so when is he coming back? Did he tell you? No, he didn't. But he assured me he'll be back. is out enjoying himself with other women. Victoria. Wake up, Victoria. Wake up. Enough this stupidity. Enough. Anyway, have you heard from Lawrence lately? Which Lawrence? Oh. Vicky. Come on. Do you know Lawrence? Lawrence that you used to go out with? Before you met your, mm -hmm. your so-called so <laughs> That boy. 
has no relevance to me anymore. All things have passed away. Remember? You dumped him like a bad habit. And now another lady has picked him up. Remember? One man's poison is another man's meat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. From what I heard. Anyway, they just got back from the Bahamas. Really? Yes. On a 10 day cruise. Oh. You see what hey. I mean? It is sheer silliness to give your love to a man who does not want you. Wake up, Vicky! Wake oh, up from his serious. slumber! Step out of this dungeon you call a new life and step into a world of freedom and great pleasure. Ladies, I need some time to think. I need to get home. friends. Girls, you need to leave now. You need to leave now. Who is that? Aren't you going to introduce us to him? He is Shalom, my husband's twin brother. He lives close by. He was sent here by my husband to help me out. Victoria, this man here has been sent to hinder you from enjoying yourself. How can you move on? Which husband? To you, enough is enough. The prince is out there enjoying himself, having a good time with ladies. Girls, can you leave? Now. We have tried. We'll see you, girl. There's a party in town tonight. You want us to pick you up? It's going to be lots of fun. Let's go, girls. She's a one of her music. Go, Mr. Shallow. Let's go, Mr. Victoria. Who are those ladies? My friends. You have any problem with them? But those are not the type of friends you are to keep. If you want to... Shalom, when will your brother come back to me? Victoria, your husband is coming soon. He spoke to me this afternoon and told me to ask you again of his coming. But you need it. To be patient. He said when he was trying to explain to you in the afternoon, you are not patient with him. I am tired of this waiting game. I cannot keep on waiting for a man who has no definite time of coming back. Things are happening out there. I am missing a lot. And yet all I get is a promise of a relocation to a beautiful home sometime. I am tired of these empty promises. All these are not empty promises, Victoria. I came from there. It is real. But as long as you allow those ungodly friends with worldly lust and desires, they will make you to lose interest in the glorious things prepared for you by your husband. When is he coming back? My patience is running out. No. No, Victoria. You've got to hold out. When is he coming back? Is coming back soon. I am tired of this waiting game.
wrong association, listening to ungodly counsel, standing in the ways of sinners, and sitting in the midst of these corners. Is it not interesting that your life is almost similar to what is happening to that woman? No. You have gradually begun to open the door of your heart to your ungodly friends who are enticing you to step out of the covering of your Lord and Master into the lustful freedom of the world. They are influencing you to abandon your faith and you have begun to combine church attendance with a with series of night parties. You are mixing your love for Jesus Christ with the love of the pleasures of this world. You have begun to listen to your godly friends who are making you to reduce your love for your God and Master. So, the wife of the prince has begun to become seriously impatient. loyal to my husband. Oh, there we go again. I cannot go out with you. I can't. You're gonna wait on the man who's abandoned you for years? You're holding on to the love for a man who's back home, enjoying himself with other ladies while you're here languishing in loneliness. Vicky, I am offering you my deep love. Baby and money and money. What else am I going to do to show you that I love you? Nelson, what do you really want from me? What I'm asking you is to give me a chance. Let me show you how much I really love you. Come with me, let me take you out. Nelson. Yes, my love. I need some time. I need to think this over. Just give me some time. You want some time? I'll give you some time. But whenever you think about me, I want you to think of a man that will love you and never abandon you. Think of a man who will treat you with love, care, and money. <laughs> we'll spend our honeymoon on a seven-day cruise in the classiest hotels around the world. Italy, Singapore, the Caribbeans, even at any hotel of your choice. Our honeymoon will be on a seven day cruise around the world. Think of a man who is dying to love you. What? Will it be okay if I. What? I give you a hug? I just like you. No! Like you. <laughs> I haven't even made up my mind. I see. I know exactly what to do. What? <laughs> Will you drive me to the altar you dream? No. I'll just show you the yes! <laughs> And I'll lift you up. And lift my arms. And together. And everybody will be watching us. <laughs> and that will be great true love. <laughs> sweet heart. I will give you some time. I'll be back. Same time tomorrow.
all the money, but I haven't said yes or no. Even if you decide to say no, that's a testimony of my love for you, my queen. I'll see you. into the house. Have you been eavesdropping on me? I came in when you were talking. I thought you saw me. I was sitting in the kitchen because I didn't want to disturb your conversation. Victoria, what briefcase is this? And who was that man? I Do don't you know, know. And I am not under any obligation to let you know which guest or visitor I receive in this house. And it is none of your business, whoever I choose to befriend or who gives me a gift, okay? That man has come to deceive you into leaving your husband the prince and marrying him. Is it it? That man is a deceiver. Is your enemy. The enemy of your glorious destiny. Please, don't do it. Don't do what? Victoria, your husband will come very soon. He is coming. He will come and take you to his last... Stop place. fooling me! Stop fooling me with an empty and hopeless promise. Stop deceiving me to wait for a man who no longer has interest in me. Is he really coming back? But, I don't believe it. But he has assured you that he's coming back. No! The wife of the prince took gifts from the man. And that was a gradual compromise. That is similar to your case. The influence of worldly friends and desire for lustful pleasure has overwhelmed you till you gradually began to slide into lustful pleasure. You still remain in the church. But there are no clear demarcation between you and your worldly friends. You attend parties with them. Yeah, you all have fun dancing with husbands of other women. And you are beginning to sleep with other men without any trace of guilt in your heart. You abandon your faith in the Lord. And you are now becoming comfortable with the sins you once hated. missing a lot. I have rejected the hands of so many men dying to date me. All in the name of waiting for a prince who has no definite time of coming back. this? Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi. What's going on? You no longer sound enthused as before. You have lost your joy and inspiration. There's no excitement when you listen to me as before. I hope you're not getting discouraged about my long delay. I really am. I am. I'm getting very uncomfortable with your long delay. No. Please, don't be discouraged. 
I am almost rounding up my assignment here. My dear husband, you have not been able to answer my question. You must be definite. Definite? On what? When exactly are you coming back? Tell me. Princess Victoria, I am not only coming back to you, but I am coming to bring you back here with me. This is the Palatia Mansion. It's a very large kingdom where servants are readily available to do your biddings. My father is the king, while I am the heir to the throne. And you shall be my royal queen, sitting beside me always. Enough of those promises. They are beginning to bore me. They no longer make meanings to me. When are you coming back? But I am coming back to you. When? When? My father has not told me. But by all indications, I could be ordered to return any time from now. I am tired. Getting very frustrated. No. No. You must wait. Hello? 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 Victoria? Victoria? running mad, waiting endlessly for a man who has broken his promises and is no longer coming back? Will I continue to wait in the slavery I call freedom? My prince, is he back? Infidelity, just by flattering you over the phone. Vicky, I have presented myself to you wholeheartedly. And I've made you a promise that I would not abandon you. I'm not gonna abandon you. I have really come to get this over with. Say something. We can say something. What? Look into my eyes and tell me you don't love me. And I promise you I'm going to walk right out that door. Never to return. Never to bother you again. person I've ever known. You're the most caring person I've ever met. All I'm asking is, let me be the one that's going to be there for you. To, to care for you. Am I, am I asking for too much? Wait. Say something. 
to dinner. I'm ready to go with you. <sighs> this is a dream come true. So how do I look? Look trendy. Dazzling. You are so gorgeous in your beautiful, exquisite attire. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Enough. Stop flattering me. So, where do we go? Anywhere. I'm all yours. I'm going to take you to the best restaurant in town. We're going to spoil you rotten. I cannot wait. Just you and I. I cannot wait. <sighs> Victoria. I never expected to see you at this time. What is going on here? As you can see, I am moving on. Your brother, the prince, is no longer coming back. I cannot wait for a man who has no respect for promises. My brother, your prince, has respect for promises. He never broke vows. And we keep all the promises he ever made with you. But you must be patient. Till when? He's coming back soon. I do not believe that theory anymore. Enough of this waiting game. This man, I know him very well. He's an enemy of your destiny. Don't follow him. This man... Hey! He's only covering up for his deceitful, disloyal and treacherous brother. Both of them are time wasters. You and your brother are time wasters. He is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Victoria, don't allow this deceiver into your life. He is your enemy and the enemy of your husband. Your husband is coming back soon. And for all indications, he could arrive at any time. There are signals everywhere around to show that he will come back soon. 
Those signals have been everywhere ever since. Let's go. Let your heart be troubled, no. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Apostle Peter prophesied to us in his epistle, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 4. <laughs> he said, Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Since our father slept, all things have been as they were since the beginning of creation. But he says for that in verse 9 and 10, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some do count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. For the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and all the elements will melt with a fervent heat. The earth and all the works therein shall be burnt up. Many believers like you have ignored the warning of the Holy Spirit and they have dumped their spiritual commitment in the garbage bin. You and others like you no longer believe that Jesus Christ will come again as he has promised. And so, like the first virgins, their oil have dried up and they are empty inside. You and others like you have suddenly forgotten about heaven and have refused to keep themselves holy for the coming of their Lord, their Master. greatest gift I've ever given anybody in my life. What's that? Go ahead, open it. It's a golden ring. <laughs> I know exactly what it is.
Is it okay if I take this out? Guess what? What? You tell me. I booked a penthouse. Oh, really? But I thought you were taking me to your house. No, this is a special night. This is a, the most special night in my life. Proposing to the angel of my dreams. A lady of inequal beauty. Oh, you're the best thing that has ever happened to me. This calls for celebration. special night in my life. <laughs> I just remember, I have a very important appointment with a business associate. Appointment? You just remembered? I just remembered. I have to keep it by all means. So, what's going to happen? Do you want me to wait here for you? No. We're checking out right away. You told me last night. You got this penthouse for three days. You told me we'll, we'll, we'll have fun and enjoy ourselves. Remember? You told me you spoil me. Why, why are you cutting short this wonderful honeymoon, Nelson? The honeymoon is simply over. We need to go home. Oh, you're taking me home with you? No, that will be later. I'll see you in your house tonight. Nelson, you're behaving strange. You're co completely different from yesterday. What's going on here? I'll explain to you later, okay? I have to keep this appointment very important. When you're going home, when you're leaving, make sure you drop the keys at the front desk, okay? Nelson, are you leaving me? Aren't you listening to what I'm telling you? I have a very important appointment to keep. That's why I have to go now. Coming back 
again My grace is sufficient My spirit I give to you Behold I come quickly My reward is with me Will I find you faithful still With your God and his wide side Will your heart be fixed on him when he comes again? Princess Victoria, you betrayed me. Yes, you did. You were deceived by my enemy. Not to wait for me. I see unrighteousness all over you. And as you approach me, I can smell your unfaithfulness to our marriage vows. Who have you been with? I just went out with a friend. Unfortunately not. He is not a friend. He is not who you think he is. You have been with Nelson. You know him? You have been fooled. Nelson was my father's chief servant back home. What? He served for many years. Then suddenly, he began to corrupt the workers and the servants in the palace, instigating them against my father's authority. He started rebelling against my father's throne, and he was fired. You still don't believe me even when I tell you the truth. That explains why you would not believe that I would come back as I promised. When Nelson was fired from the palace, he stole a lot of my father's wealth. I know he has given you some money to deceive you. Everything he gave you belongs to my father. He stole it. What is that on your finger? An engagement ring? And what happened to our wedding ring? Oh, so you are now engaged to Nelson and he has defiled you. You know what? Nelson came into the city on a quest for vengeance. He knows you are the apple of my eye. He knows all about the plan to relocate you to the Palacia Mansion, a wonderful castle for you and I. And that was why he came after you to deceive and to defile you before my coming. And guess what? I got you. I don't know. But someone warned you. He told you this was not a friend, but an enemy who has come to deceive you 
away from your glorious future. My friend. Yes. The cops are here. Yes. Thank you very much. You may go. Princess Victoria, come with me and see the futility of your foolish wisdom. just brought him to confirm to you that we got him. He was trying to escape through the border, but we got him. We are pressing charges, and we intend to prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law. Very good. Thank you, officer. Thank you. Ah! According to Mark chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus Christ said, Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or in the midnight, in the cry of the rooster or in the morning. All those who are not expecting the coming of the Lord Jesus will cry bitterly when the trumpet sound for the rapture of the saint. There are many people like you in the church of God who are among the foolish virgins. They cover their sinful life with their cloak of service. They serve in the church without heaven in view. They sing in the choir they teach in the church, the pastor congregation, they lead the ministry, but with their heart engrossed in sin. This is what the Lord said to us in Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 and 12. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. Who is holy? Let him be holy still. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I think this is what the Lord said I should come and tell you. To forsake your backsliding way of life and retrace your step back to God.
You came back so early from work, I didn't expect you to be here. Yeah, I yeah. came back just in time for the workers' meeting this evening. And besides, Pastor says he would like to have a chat with the both of us. Why have you forgotten? I have an appointment in about an hour's time. I can't make it. But Pastor will ask after you. Tell him I said I have an appointment or just say something. Cover up. Me? Tell a lie. <laughs> yeah, I can never tell a lie. Especially to a man of God, my pastor. <laughs> no way. Well, I have an appointment. I can't make it to the meeting. Oh, uh, by the way, a man came in just a few minutes before you came in. He said his name is Larry. Oh my God, Larry, that's him. What did he say? He just asked after you. And he said his name is Larry and that you should meet him at the place. Which place? <laughs> the place. You know the place, don't you? Whatever. Anita. What is it? Why are you living a double life? Double life? I don't know what you mean. I mean, you profess to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but you deny him by the works of your hands. Are you now judging me? I'm not judging you. I'm just concerned because... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you? Good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine, welcome. <laughs> Good evening, ma. Oh, auntie, you got me. Hey, I was just about to escape before you came in. Anita, this when she told me she would not be around this evening, I know she might not be telling the truth. <laughs> How are you, Eunice? Auntie, I'm fine. Auntie. But, uh, what have you come to? here in central England is absolutely out of control. There are hardly words to describe it. With reports of tens of thousands of, I guess what you would have to call vanishings, now reported the impact has been staggering. 
And no matter where you look around the world, it seems that almost everyone has lost someone. And there was total mayhem on city streets everywhere as people rush around trying to find their loved ones. Unfortunately, many of the world's peace officers are being forced to pay the price. Why were they taken? Why were we left behind? No, it's not a dream, it's a dream. Eunice, it's a dream. about the outing. Auntie? Auntie, which outing? I just had a terrible dream now. A dream? What is it all about? May the Lord have mercy on us. I dreamt about the rapture. Rapture? Yes. I dreamt that I missed the rapture. I could not go with the saints. And I saw you missed it too. <laughs> Anita! Rapture of the saints? Do you people still believe in that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> this girl. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna see you me. No, what? Coming back. 